Hamilton. It'll be John Wilsey of London, Ontario. Major proceedings. His linesman Dan Emerson of Etobicoke and Calvin. To the starting goaltenders. Go selects 32-year-old Victor Doroshenko, winner of Game One in the series. In particular, he's from Spartak with a lifetime goals against average of 2.80. John Kemp gets his second start of the series. Good effort in a 2 loss on Thursday. He is a native of Burton. 17 years of age and 6 foot 2, so he's got, it, he's got it all. He has all the credentials, doesn't he? Duras for Canada, number 10, working into the corner. Out in front, green leather shot. Good save by Dereshenko. Newell Brown moving in, couldn't get to it on his backhand. Here come the Soviet selects. Keep him, keep him, Peter. Over on the right side, played there by Babinov. Out in front, Kemp. Made the save, dangerously out in front. Zubkov keeps it in for the selects. Greenlaw out there to mess up the play for Zubkov. Babinov. And here's the second, good glove save. Don't get your head in the swivel, guys. What's happening away from the puck? Canadians bottled up in their own zone by the selects. Skurjuk, number 17, now breaking out for Team Canada. Chance for Joseph on the right side. Nicely set up by Herkus. Joseph couldn't come up with it to make the shot. Benny, Kept in at the Benny. line. Come on. Ahead for Skurjuk. Skurjuk going in, trying to get around the defender between them. And Kemp had to make a play on the puck. Well, Kemp, he's the takes the crease after the whistle. Go out and touch the boards. It's a little bit of a nervous itch he has just to <laughs> keep moving around. There he is. This is like that. Philadelphia. Yeah. Gotta hold that blue line, guys. Have confidence. You can hold that blue line. There's nobody stretching you behind. You can hold the blue line, game. Come on now, deep. Dave King got it's to back in as deep as it has been. Well, as a forward, you love it when the defense can give you that blue line because then you can start to move laterally and make your place from there. When they stand you up the blue line, you sit to the blue line usually to pass it. Anxious moment there, but it crossed too many lines as Von Carpen took it off the boards. He was in behind the Soviet defense. He was whistled for the face-off back behind the Canadian line. Scoreless in the first, game three. Team Canada, Moscow Select Series, 85. Heavy stick! That's Sir around behind his net for Cavallini. He plays it up on the right side boards. It is out across the line. Here's Newell Brown. Brown here, left it for Carpen. Right. Carpen going to the backhand. Couldn't get a shot away. And a penalty being called against the selects. So a Canada power play. Canada has to do four shots to come in hard up. And there's a hooking penalty by Karakin. And uh, Canada's got a chance for a power play. They've got their big scoring unit out here. And a face off in the Soviet zone. This is Miller. Miller getting in, gets the shot away. That one off the stick the behind the Soviet the goal. Quick. Miller can't keep it in. The Soviets clear it all the way down. Canada's efficiency on the power play, two for five, 40% in this series so far. Yep. Chris Felix. Ahead for Ronning. Ronning has problems at his own. Circles back. He's the leading scorer for Team Canada. Cliff Ronning to the line. Ronning fired it well wide. Looked close to an outside, but it was waved off. Back point. Kept it. Miller. Chris Felix tries to give it in for Canada, does. This is McLaren winding up for the shot. That one off a post. 16 seconds left in the power play. This is Priyakin offside at the Canadian line. Well, Can't get it closer than that, Daryl Fiddler. Well, some good pressure there by Team Canada. The power play's looking sharp. Here's McLaren. He's got a good chance to shoot it. He just snaps it. We got a guy in front for the screen. It goes right off the post. We need, we need a few breaks. Almost one right there. McLaren Move part of the Spengler Cup team in 84. From York University. Trenton Cab. Trenton Cab. One minute, nine seconds left in the manpower advantage for Canada. This is Bullian. Down the right side. Couldn't keep it in. That's Carrier. New to the Canadian lineup tonight. He lost the puck for a moment. Now Chris Felix tries his luck. Joseph. I can't. Pulpikin cleared it out 
And now just 44 seconds left in the Canadian power play. With Canada rake it up. For the Soviets, Chris Felix. The takes a return up. pass now. Quickly. Ahead for Boulian. Don't go back. Don't go back. Move it out. Move it out. Don't go back. We're really pressing, guys. Felix couldn't get it through to his man going to the left wing. And the Soviets carry it in again. It's fired in by Nemchinov. Ten seconds left in the Canadian power play. Leading the attack is Trent Yanni. Yanni across the line, trying to get it out front. Okay, four seconds. Four seconds. Back to the line, Cavallini into the corner. Back for Cavallini. Took a shot, weak and wide. Herkus couldn't get to it. Back to full strength, the Moscow selects. And one glorious scoring opportunity on the power play for Canada. And it'll be back to the Soviet zone for a face-off. They're really pressing that power play, you guys. They're man short, they're pressing the floor check. Puck moving, okay? Puck moving quickly. It's a good puck. Dave King was telling me uh, this afternoon that he was hoping to get a little offense out of the Herkus, Bully and Joseph line. Uh, he thinks that they could be a little better offensively than they have been the last couple of games. Soviets have outshot Canada to this point, Daryl, five to three. 14.37 to play in the opening period. Good solid defense now, good solid defense and good transition to the back. Let's get At the 88 Olympics in Calgary, Canadian athletes will go for gold. That's what Sport Canada's best ever assistance program is all about. Brent Yanni plays it over for Cavallini. Now Yanni takes a return hey Chris, pass. Hey Tried to hit Duras on okay. the right side. It's up and over the boards. Over the penalty box. Pass, if you're open. Guys, listen, guys, against these fellas, they'll jump up in that 2-1-2 two, two, two neutral zone, so the free defense, if you want the puck, make sure you communicate. If you don't want it, you don't want it. Face off just outside the Canadian line. That's Newell Brown, Team Canada captain. Flanked by Doris and young okay. Jeff Greenlaw. Maybe up next. Heavy stick. Shot right on. Fired by Garyanov. We call them, we call them. Is checked by Skurju. Perudinov for the Soviets, number 20. Working yeah, against yeah, Duras yeah, and yeah. Yanni. Now it comes loose to Skurjuk. Skurjuk. Turning in the corner. Both Canadians have now backed off. It's to the line. The shot from Kanarekin. Skurjuk didn't see it. It's in the boards. Yanni can't come up with it. Now Duras has it for Canada. Duras ahead for Greenlaw on the left side. Deep, deep and change. Greenlaw around the Soviet in the neutral area. Here they come quickly though, Varianov to the Canadian line, all by himself, left it there for Vasiliev. Vasiliev into the corner, behind the net. And picked up back there by Oshevnikov. Back for Vasiliev. Greenlaw for Canada. Replay on the three hit there for... Some good hitting, Daryl, no question about it. to the side of the net, Kemp standing there and held it out somehow as the Soviet Koshevnikov drove in very, very close. The Team Canada has been taking the body in their own end zone. Uh, the guys don't even look at the puck. They just run the guy into the boards, finish him off out of the play so that the Soviet player cannot get back into the play for a pass. And that's what they have to do, eliminate the man. 13 minutes, 5 seconds to play. First Scoreless. Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. This is game three of the Team Canada Moscow Select Tour of 85. Let's see, that happened too often to a Soviet attacking unit. They'll go back and regroup. Popikin. But it goes all the way down. That'll be Chris Felix back to touch it first. And icing called against the Moscow Select. Boxing ahead on the Sports Network, Willie DeWitt, a homecoming to Calgary. We'll have it for you live on TSN. He meets up against Scott Wheaton, unbeaten in 13 fights. Wheaton is 12-0-1. Live on TSN coming up Friday, December 13th.
Yeah, I saw you looking at him. Soviets, Zubkov, got it ahead to the line. Good opportunity. Kemp held it out somehow. That was Priyakin. Comes loose to Priyakin again. He has problems at the line. It's finally forced out by Proft. Go selects. Take over just inside the Canadian. Blue line now, going after it. Steppa. Yakin moves in as well. John, Ke John Kemp is playing with a lot of confidence here tonight. If you look back at any time Team Canada has won any games against the Soviets, they've had unbelievable goaltending, and we've been getting that thus far in the game. Another good save, Kemp. He's been called out to make several so far. Forced out across the, so, uh, the Canadian line. Try to play broken up by Team Canada. That's Carrier. Ahead for Ronning. Ronning is decked just inside the line. Saw the check coming. Ducked out of the way. Soviets on the attack again. And it's cleared back to the neutral zone. This is Miller. Mike Miller had an opportunity. Couldn't control the puck. It is back for Yanni for Canada. Over for Carrier. Carrier trying to sneak it through for Miller. This is running and running. Has it go off his stick? Maybe a little over anxious down there, Darrell. It's having a little difficulty controlling the puck. Back to the line. Shot right on. Fired just wide. Samiliev. The line once. Bozikov feeds it in. Just tipped out. Good play by McLaren. That forces the Moscow select back to their line. Kareem. Checked by Miller. Miller, good pass for Ronning, who goes into the corner. For Chris Felix. Soviets having some difficulties controlling. Miller, the shot. Brilliant save by Doroshenko. Big shot by Mike Miller. And an even bigger save by Doroshenko. This is the top offensive. Ronning, nice little drop pass here. Miller just cranks it. Good glove save right into the glove. Soviets out shooting Canada 8 to 4 at this stage. Pretty good goaltending at both ends of the rink, that's for sure. Doroshenko, 32 years of age. Plays for. The MVP for the Soviets in the first game in Calgary, and he's certainly carrying on right, right through to this game. Face off just outside the Moscow line. Herkus, Joseph, and Boulian. There's a side out there with Ronning off. Listen, if we get good control, one guy stretch early and get him out. Well, the Soviets. Varianov. We got Kemp. Went down to smother it. Hanarikin and scored the first just past the 10 minute mark of the period. 9.54 to play. Vasiliev coming out with it for the Soviets. Now Newell Brown with Duras. Brown dumps it in, four skaters aside. It was picked up by Babinov. And the Soviets with Vasiliev start the attack. Keep him, ride that man, ride that man. Bill Brown makes the play. Brown has a chance. And couldn't get by Zubkov. A little slow afoot, it appeared, Newell Brown was in that play. Soviet line once more. Vasiliev is there. The shot from Babinov right over Kemp. Brown dumps it in. Mike. McLaren is out there along with Miller. This is McLaren working against Zubkov. Zubkov has it poked out his stick. Going in. Good chance for McLaren. Weak shot though. Set up nicely by. Again, Doroshenko. Clears it off to the right wing. Surge. Priyakin. Soviets. Check just inside the Canadian line. 
Bozikov can't get around Benning. Peter at center ice. This is Miller for Canada. Miller plays it back. Both teams at full strength once more. Doris to set it up. Ronning is in there for Canada, number 27. He can't come up with it. Soviets start out. Priyakin, number 11. Canadian line, Priyakin. Got it over for Boldine. Back for Priyakin. He couldn't get a shot away. Canadian defense is backing in a little bit. Them so far, back to the point. Kareen, or rather Boldine, to Priyakin. Out in front, broken up by Miller now. Boldine, back to the line, and it goes between the two Soviet defensemen standing at the point. 7.37 to play, first period, scoreless. Team Canada, Moscow selects. Get her deep! Benning for Canada, tried to feed it through for Karp, but it goes all the way to Doroshenko. He play on it now. Khrushchev working in against Karpin. Doris moves in for Canada as well. They'll hold it there for a whistle in the Soviet zone. Scarless in the first. Pretty good game so far. At the Olympics in Calgary, Canadian athletes will go for gold. That's what Sport Canada's best ever assistance program is all about. Some members of this team will be there and young folks like that will likely be watching. <laughs> Two years and a couple of months from now. And it's hard for the D to play split on that. Too far. Back to the line. Carpen winds up with a shot. Doroshenko handled it easily. Hey, we used to somebody to shoot over the rebound. Well, the Soviets. Samiliev has it taken away. Carpen take gets it back now. to the line. Dave oh, King wants the Canadian the team to take it a little line. farther into the Soviet zone when they get to the line. Opportunity for the Soviets. That one on the leg. Serge Roy for Canada. Roy tried to hit Duras on the right wing. Soviets quick to the attack once more. Kareen for Samiliyevs. Back to Kareen. The save from Kemp. This is Kareen. Out in front. That narrowly missed. Going in off a leg. There's a shot. Kemp makes the save. Covers up with Soviets all around. A well, smart play by John Kemp here. He knew his team was running around a little bit, a little bit in trouble. So he took the face off. Just a little. Here's the guy coming right around the net. There's a near miss. The Soviets are good at that. Coming out from behind and trying to stuff it. Face off coming across the Canadian line. Soviets in control in the neutral area. For the selects for Rudinov, number 20. Farudinov taken out by two players. Varianov can't come up with it. Now it goes to Farudinov. And Varianov in Ice is Canada. Bullion. Got it to Joey's the line. line. Not cross. Ice is really slow, guys. So heavy stick and bear down. Man coming, face. Man coming. Keep him. Keep him. That's a better job. The man coming was Farudinov. All right. All right. We're now. All right. Chance for Canada going in. Oh. Kirkus. Kirkus missed. Out in front. And that time, Fabian Joseph, number eight, could come up with it. Here's Herkus, another chance with one. He was weak and wide with a second shot. Previous shot, he went in all alone on Doroshenko. Soviets start back. Babinov takes the long shot off a stick. This is Clark, set up for him by Kemp. Clark trying to get it ahead for Felix. Or for Duras along the boards. Duras is the man. To the line and across. Greenlaw fires it to an open wing. Now it comes back to Greenlaw. Greenlaw tried to poke it in. Andy Pop sends his right winger in. This is Clark for Canada. Vasiliev takes it away, at least momentarily, up and over the glass. And there'll be a stoppage in play after that. Clark didn't know what exactly had happened to him down there. Well, one thing Team Canada might lack a little bit is depth in scoring. You take a National Hockey League team, they got guys like Bossy, Gretzky. When they get chances like this, they sometimes put them in. I think the Soviet gave him a little tap as he was shooting it, and he missed the net by 
by more than a couple inches there. But, uh, <laughs> you're a big you know, guy tonight. When you're, when you're 19 years of age and you're in a competition like this, you do try to hurry yourself sometimes. And you're and, uh, racing in on a Soviet goaltender with a Soviet defender for Koshetnikov. Koshetnikov couldn't get a shot away. Back to the line. That one blocked by the Canadian defense. This is Antipov for the Soviets. Behind the net. His pass intercepted by Chris Felix. Ahead for Duras. Duras neatly backed it off the boards. And this is Newell Brown all by himself. He dumps it in and heads for the bench. Antipov for the Soviets. Far side for Popikin. Popikin simply dumps it down into the Canadian zone. Back for it is Yanni. It comes right out in front. This is Benning. Benning sure, clears it to the corner. 3.31 to play, first period. Benning has an open man on the left side. Ahead for Carpen. Carpen to the Soviet line. Has a man out in front, Joseph. Carpen spun around, and the angle was covered by Doroshenko. Long lead pass. And it's too far that time for Boldin. Icing is called against the Moscow Selects. Still scoreless. Excellent hockey action. Team Canada and the Moscow Selects. We look ahead to our NHL schedule on the Sports Network. Monday, December 16th. The Whalers and the Canadians. The Forum in Montreal. Start time, 7.30 Eastern. And tomorrow, we get to the Forum as well. For game four in this series, Moscow selects Team Canada, 7.30 Eastern. So lots of hockey action ahead in the month of December on the Sports Network. Tony. Soviets controlling in their own zone. Off the boards, that's Felix for Canada coming up with it. Felix for Miller. Miller got it in across the line. McLaren can't get to it, but Cavallini trailing on the play, keeps it in. Trip. Off the boards, running. And it Come on, Chrissy. is Felix, who has difficulties against the Soviets at the line. Cavallini goes back for it. Close it up, close it up. Got a man with speed there, For the Chrissy. Soviets. The ice is a little bit slow tonight. Watch the I noticed they've been the making line. quick changes. They're only out there 30, 40 seconds, and at this tempo of a hockey game, you have to do that. It's third period, you'll be burnt out. For the most part, King goes with three lines. The Soviets have four, although there's a the couple feet. of other players hey. that move up to form a fourth line on occasion for Team Canada, including Perry Prop yeah. and Von Carpen. Right back to the line. Soviets chance, Kent the save on Kuryuchkov. Herkes got it out for Canada. Nemchina for the Soviets. For and back around the other side, kept in for Team Canada by Fabian Joseph in behind the goal. Team Canada unable to control back there. This is for Rudinov. Slowed down from behind by Boulian for Canada. Soviet slow in letting this one develop. Skurjuk, 17. Man behind. Skates to the bench. And fresh troops are out there for the selects as well. Antipod trying to work around Chris Felix. Felix takes him out. And rather heartily, Kareem goes in. As does Newell Brown, but the Soviets come out with it. Back to the point. The shot deflected out in front. And Kemp saw it coming all the way. Well, there Kemp is again. Anytime a Soviet shooting, he comes way out of his net. Three or four feet out above the crease here. And Cuts down the angle. Play back to the point. Our appointment's wide open because there are wingers in the corner, but there he is, right at the top of the crease. It was Vasilov. Alexander Vasilov, number 13, getting the opportunity out in front. He has not seen much action in this series. Final minute of the period. Campus save on a point shot. That time from Bozakov. Soviets controlling in the Canadian zone. Cleared right out in front. Another shot from the point. This is Vasilov behind the Canadian goal. Right out in front again, Vasilov had an opportunity. It was blocked by the Canadian defense. Team Canada scrambling around in its own, at least for the moment. Carpen is down. Over to the open wing. Soviets still in control. Greenlaw takes the man, not the puck. Finally, the Canadians get it to the line and across. Duras simply dumps it into the Soviet zone. 
19 seconds left in the first period. Soviets start back. Good One lead. last rush. Time for that. Koshevnikov. Lead man coming wide. Lead man. Lead Koshevnikov man. headed right out in front. Six seconds. The shot blocked by Roy. And a chance for Canada. Time runs out. Bill Brown knew that Team Canada had run out of time in the first period, but I'm sure the Canadians will be happy with a scoreless tie after one. Well, I think so, too. That was a pretty entertaining period of hockey. Canada had their chances to score. They didn't put them in, but John Kemp, I think uh, he was the, the story of that period. He made some very good saves. I think, if anything, Dave King's going to tell his players number of shots from the point area and uh, you want to cover them. You don't want the forwards in the corner to have that option to pass out to the point man. For a while, Team Canada was backing in on top of Kemp. I think uh, Dave King corrected that a little bit in the latter stages of the period. Well, he certainly did. And I know, like I said earlier, as a forward, you like it when the defensemen give you the blue line because then you can start cutting and making your plays. If you have to make the pass before, uh, it makes it easier for the wingers. But in order for the uh, defensemen to stand up, they have to have the wingers picking up their wingmen. And, uh, Maybe at some point they didn't. Moscow selects outshot Team Carey from the Forum in Montreal Sunday, 7.30. We'll have it live for you on the Sports Network. It's been a good series so far. We look forward to the completion of this game and moving on to the Forum to watch Team Canada in its fourth matchup against the Moscow Selects coming up tomorrow. There's enough timeouts. We can go three if we have to wait. The TV slows it down, huh? As we did mention, we do have a microphone on Dave King. We've listened in to his comments on the bench several times. And in this game, in this series at least, each team has allowed one timeout per period. King has used his a couple of times, but not in every period. Well, I guess he feels if it's a, wants to slow the game down a little bit or regroup, uh, a lot of times teams wait, obviously, in the NHL until the last minute of play when the goalie's pulled or or it might be in the middle of a penalty when they want to get their penalty killers back out there. They might have a special pair. I think it's a good rule. Yeah. It's been interesting. Igor Dimitriov is the head man of this Moscow Select Hockey team. He never played for the Soviet number one team. He was a member of the National Junior Championship team from the Soviet Union and coached the National Junior team in 1984 to a victory in Sweden. We got a good crowd here tonight. Uh, no, very supportive of our team, Cannon. That's nice to see. Uh, well, they're calling it a sellout. You may see a few empty seats scattered throughout the house, but they are calling it a sellout. In fact, there were no tickets available. And I think a few more people have uh, arrived at this hockey game since it got underway because there are very few seats empty out there now. Second period action underway. This is Felix for Canada. Over on the left side for McLaren. Miller back to McLaren. He's to the line and across, then checked by two Soviets. The puck trickled through, however. Oh, yeah, no, and no, it's no, back no, to the no, line no. for Canada. Serge Roy yeah, almost overcommitted himself. Shot right on Doroshenko from Roy. McLaren took a swipe at it. It comes back to McLaren in the corner. McLaren circling around. Looks to the point man and plays it back into the corner for Ronning. Ronning working out in front. Goes back behind the goal again. Here's Felix. And the Soviets change, change able to intercept. King is calling for new troops out there. You can hear him in the background. Here comes Team Canada, led by Roy. Pass just onside. Shot, Noah Brown, the save, Doroshenko. Well, a heads up play by Team Canada. Got the Soviets on a line change. There's a line change here, yes. The Soviet bench is a little farther away. There's no Brown right in. He cranks it. Again, one of the Canadian players going for the rebound. 32-year-old Victor Doroshenko was wise to cover up on that one. It is Neil Brown out there at center for Canada, flanked by Duras and Greenlaw. This is Duras. Takes the shot, slipped it through somehow. Doroshenko forced to make a save. Soviets on the attack now, led by Samiliev. Over for Kareen on the right wing. And Kareen fed it in for Samiliev. He wasn't deep enough. Back to the line, kept in by Pavanov. That one off the post. So Defense sure, Kemp saw it coming Defense all the way. Play up, play Samiliev up, for the Soviets to the line and across. Drop pass for Kareem. 
Kareem working himself free, backhand out in front. And Kareem paid as he moved toward the net that time. Here's Newell Brown for Canada with Greenlaw on the left wing. Greenlaw racing in after it. Doroshenko clears it around the boards, and it comes right out of the Soviet zone. Open man on the left wing. Soviets unable to negotiate that pass. Here's Benning for Canada to the line, winds up the shot. Doroshenko. Cliffy, you got Brock and Carbot next. Joseph into the corner, along with Herkus. Neither can get to it. The Soviets dump it all the way down. One thing I noticed that the uh, Soviet goaltenders are doing a little more now than they did a couple of years ago is that when the puck shot in around the net, they're coming out and playing it. Uh, that was one of the things I can remember going in against them. We talked about shooting it in, knowing that the puck's going to come right around, and we'd send two attackers on the other side, but uh, they're adjusting. Here's Duras' quick shot now. He's using the screen. The defenseman has a screen through the legs, and Dershenko's there for a good pad save. Back to the line. Another shot right on Dershenko. That time by Clark. Soviets on, trying on, to on. break a man open. Here they come now. Skurjuk, number 17, written out neatly by Benning. On. Trailing on the play for Rudinov. Comes up with it. Loose at the side of the Canadian goal. Here's a chance for Canada. Three on one. First time we've seen this the entire series. Working in for Canada. Joseph has it poked away. This is Felix getting set for the shot. Doroshenko the save. Felix again. Working out. Got it to the open point man. Back for Felix. He couldn't get a strong shot away. And the Soviets able to regroup. Varyanov, number 12, to the line for Antipov. His backhand off a leg. Joseph for Canada. Head for Herkus. On the right wing, Herkus tried to feed it through for Boulian. For the Soviets, Skurju. This is Skurju. Skurjuk, man open on the right side, shot fired, and Kemp made the save. A blistering shot that time from Bozikov. Opened up a little bit here. Team Canada, Moscow Select Series of 85. Well, Canada getting a few more shots this period. They had 6-2 and shot some good scoring chances. And Dave King talked about this line of Herkus, Boulian, and Joseph. He needed some offense from them, and they've been getting a good, some good chances. Peter, Peter, Peter. Soviets. Out of their own zone, quick to the attack, as always. Long shot fired Peter, well wide. Canada gets it to the line, and Proft gets it across. Proft tried to sneak it through for Duras. Here's Duras now getting set for the shot. Oh! He pulled Arashenko out and missed on the far side, not by too much. Proft trying to work himself out in front. Proft is there. Oh, he scores! Well, big boost here for Canada. Here they make the Soviets cop up the puck. Some good board checking, just some hard work by Prop there. That was a knuckleball, Darrell. Well, notice how when he comes in front of the net, how he keeps his weight, heavy, heavy hands on his stick. He keeps his stick down on the ice. He just bears down here. Big break for Team Canada there. Concentration now, concentration. Not a pretty, pretty goal, but it counted. Perry Prop dribbled it through. Durashenko has played it almost again. For Canada, working through Miller that time. Loose out in front, Miller can't come up with it. He's working against Babinov. Out in front again. And that time McLaren couldn't come up with it. Soviets quick to the attack, though. The assist number 10, Durash. The time, 3.59. 3.59, the time of the goal that has given Canada a one to nothing lead. Here is McLaren, McLaren's pass off a of Soviet leg. Miller has it intercepted by Katarikin. Soviets have to take it outside the line. Make sure on that play now. Chris got to make sure on that play. This is Priyakin. Priyakin to the line. Zubkov. Zubkov working in. Out in front. Lots of Soviets in front of that Canadian goal. Somehow they didn't get it through to John Kemp in goal. Dave King wants changes out there. Carrier has a pass for Miller intercepted. Soviets going right in and Kemp stood his ground on Kareem that time, number 15. Kemp caught out of his net. Team Canada scrambling around in its own zone just a little bit now. McLaren off the boards. Got it ahead for running. And running. On, Didn't Cliffy. see it coming. Jeez, look for time to Hurry. Jeez, you can't sit that long out there. 
King wants his troops to down. trade off a little bit more quickly. That one is flipped high in the air and out of play. That would have facilitated a line change. Let's listen in. You don't make that old line pass. You make sure in the zone. Mike, Kirk. Mike, John. Oh, here's the Soviet forward here. He gets a step on the defense, but he closing right in on his back. And look how he uses his leg to hold the defenseman off. He throws a little high over the net there. Yeah, late. That was Kareem. Canada getting a little uh, sloppy in their own end zone there the last shift. They were a little tired, Daryl. I think when you heard Dave King talking about quicker changes, that's exactly what he was trying to say. Well, a tired hockey player does make a lot of mistakes, that's for sure. Soviets have some pressure on Team Canada now. Samilia back to the line. It is blocked, and nicely, by Greenlaw. For the Soviets. Ruchkov played it over to the open wing. Come on, Tuffy, settle down. It is back for the Soviets. To Popikin. Kareen to the line and across, played it back, but found Newell Brown there. Now here's a chance, Similiav shoots, and that one didn't miss by much. Off the side of the goal, Soviets lots of pressure on now. Similiav working in, can't get a backhand away. Well covered by Chris Felix. This is Kareen, Kareen out in front, and Kemp held the fort somehow. Faceoff is going to be in the Canadian zone. Soviets. Supplying lots of pressure to Team Canada in that last series. At the 88 Olympics in Calgary, Canadian athletes will go for gold. That's what Sport Canada's best ever assistance program is all about. Listen now. Dave King is utilizing one of those timeouts, which I think is a very wise thing to do. The guys are a little excited now. Soviets have been in our end the last two shifts, and he's just trying to settle them down here a little bit. Make a lot of risky plays. Just settle her down. Communicate. Firm, crisp passes, okay? Get back to some good, solid hockey. All right? So many others want to mention. Come on, listen up. Get a up. guy and keep him now. Let's not be following the puck. Get a guy and keep him. That's all. Finish them off. Get a guy and keep him. Okay, but get your get a get a wide focus on the game again. Don't narrow in. Get a wide focus. All right, let's go. One of the maybe he was listening in on you, Daryl. You <laughs> said they had to settle down, and King just uh, took the words right after you'd said them. Well, one of the things Ronnie Smith was trying to tell them is, in your own end, you key on one guy. You do not start running around chasing after the puck. And the Soviets there, a couple times, the Canadian player would break down on a one-on-one -on -one situation, would make another fellow leave his man to come and help out, and that's when you get into trouble. one nothing, Team Canada, 13.25 to play in the second period. Bullian gets it out across the line. The Canadians have outshot the Soviets, seven to two so far in the second period. Take a man, take a man. And he popped to the line. Camp out of his net to set it up. This is Joseph for Canada. Joseph, open man, center ice area. Bullian, Bullian to the line. He has bodied heavily. Good check by the Soviet defender. Yanni for Canada, has trouble behind his goal. Out in front, good chance for Skirjuk. It was taken out by number 10, Antipov. Skirjuk was there, couldn't get a good shot away. Back to the point, shot right on. The save by Camp, he almost let that one get by. The shot from the point. Well, the Soviets are applying a lot more pressure this period than they have most of the series. Uh, here's the play, the puck does not get out here, it comes around the board. There's a one good save. Watch the Soviet defenseman rush over and keep the puck in here. Again, Canada had the puck three times there. Your line's going next. That didn't get it out. Canada Rakin taking that drive, and Kemp made the save, but it trickled in underneath him. He had to look behind him. And goalies don't like looking behind them for the puck very often at all, do they? That's not a nice feeling. Keep a wide focus on the game, guys. Wide focus on the game. Soviets in control in front of Team Canada's Jack Kemp. Prop though, backhands it out. Zubkov over for Babinov. Ahead on the right wing for Koshevnikov. His shot. Kemp steered it to the corner. This is Chris Felix for Canada. Flipped it to the line, kept in by the Soviets. Now running, gets it out. Sent across Soviets' control, however. 
Zubkov took a shot. Chance for Kraft. He has Canada's only goal. Couldn't catch up to it. Koshevnikov has difficulty. So does Vasiliev against Prof. Prof got it back in across his line. Felix has to go back for it now under some pressure. This is Prof for Canada number three. Lost it. Soviets control behind the Canada goal. Koshevnikov couldn't get him turning. Back to the line. Shot. Kemp makes the save. And now it is out of his out of his uh, team zone after that because he had a chance and just trickled it across the blue line. Professional heavyweight boxing ahead on TSN next week. A homecoming for Willie DeWitt in Calgary. He takes on Scott Wheaton of the United States. Wheaton is unbeaten in 13 fights as a professional heavyweight. We'll have it live at 10 Eastern Friday, December 13th. Well, I'm sure Canada would like to get this thing changed around. They've been in their end, I think, the last three or four shifts, and they're kind of hanging on here a little bit. Clark has got the draw that time for Canada. It's ahead for Boulian. He can't keep control all the way down. Icing is waved off. Boulian has a pretty good hit in there to a Soviet defender. Perkis can't keep it in for Canada. That's Carrier getting it ahead for Boulian. Boulian still working along the boards with it. Soviets, though, regain possession. Vozikov leading the attack. Vozikov into the center. And it is Joseph getting it out across the Canadian line that time. Soviets come right back now. Chance for Canada. Joseph. Made the play, shot right on. Doroshenko made the save. Didn't have too much difficulty with that one. Well, that was from quite a ways out. One thing, uh, yeah, nice and steady. We're in we'll control. Dave King here for a minute. You're in control now, guys. That's good. Keep it. Dave's the type of coach. He tries to give his players as much confidence as he can. He pats on the back or sometimes a lot better than a kick in the butt. He does a lot of that. <laughs> Soviets out across their line. Ronning breaks it up there, though. This is Ronning working in, getting set for the shot. Doroshenko came out, played it beautifully. It comes back to Ronning and McLaren along the boards. Here's Ronning once more, another chance. McLaren can't come up with it. McLaren back checking. Messes things up for Skurdu. Canadians get it to the line. Out and across. Lone Soviet back. Babinov for Sukhkov. And now Barudinov, number 20, has to retreat for the Soviets. This is Skirduk. Skirduk up the right side. And it's batted away by Ronning. King is pleased with the defensive effort of his team Canada. He has to be pleased with a one to nothing lead. Canada had a one nothing lead early in game one in this series, Darrell. Yes, it did. It didn't last too long. You know, the Soviets can score in bunches. Here's a good play by Cliff Ronning here. He's a tricky little player. Not very big, but that puck just about got by him. It was a good save. But Dorochenko is very good at playing the angles. He comes right out. Face off in the Canadian zone. It goes to Roy. Roy gets it to Carpen. Up on the right side, Carpen. Backhands it down. Daddy Pop back for the Soviets. Number 10. Good four checking for Team Canada. Roy for Carpen. This is Perry Prop. Prop tried to get it ahead for Fabian Joseph. Couldn't the Soviets move in? A chance for Vasiliev. Plays it off. Into the middle. Back to the line. And the shot. It's not through. Kemp had to make a save. Looked like an innocent enough shot. That time. From Kriuchka. The Soviet was in front for the tip. All the defenseman was trying to do here is just get the puck through. He knows he has a man in front of the net. He just wants to get it through. Good save there by Kemp. And that's the type of goaltending we're going to need to beat this hockey club. That's for sure. John Kemp. He's a big young man. Six feet, 190 pounds, 22. He was in Philadelphia's camp uh, my last year in Philadelphia. He played goal for UFT for Mike Keenan, and Mike Keenan gave him a chance to come out and try out for the Flyers. This is Cavallini for Canada. 
Trying to beat it ahead for Greenlaw on the left side. Now Greenlaw can't come up with it. Soviets have it into the corner. Priyakin goes in after it, centered it out in front. Take a man, Greeny! Find the puck. Find the pass with Jeff. Jeff. Right on the attack now. Good chance on the left wing. And Cavallini takes his man down. There's going to be a penalty. Penalty coming out to Team Canada. As Paul Cavallini looks on, he is a brother of Gino, who plays for the Calgary Flames. He's a big boy, 210 pounds, six foot two, so strong kid. So the key for Canada here, first of all, is to win the faceoff in their own zone. Well, Canada's penalty killing has been excellent this series so far. The other night they killed off a five-minute penalty. I think it might have tired them out a little bit. The Soviets just scored a couple quick goals right after that. Soviets are one for six in the series in power play opportunities. One goal for six tries, an efficiency rating of 17%. See how they do here to the line and across Emiliev. And it's cleared by Felix. This is McLaren chasing Babinov right back into the Soviet zone. Zubkov tries to start things for the Soviets. He is checked. Good play by Newell Brown. Here they come again. Kareem to the line. Stops quickly. Back to the line, Zupka, back for Kareem. And at four left in the power play advantage for the Soviets. And around behind the net. Nemchinov, back to the line, Babinov. Fed into the slot, Kareem couldn't control it. He had a chance if he'd gotten it away more quickly. Well played out in front. Batted down at the last moment by Kropp. Soviets, opportunity, Kareen couldn't control it. Now, and fed into the corner. Kemp gets out of his net to work for himself. This is for Rudinov. Back for Babinov. Zubkov at the other point. He takes it. Marianov, number 12, to the side of the net. And that time it hopped over Kareen's stick once more. 13 seconds left in the Soviet power play. Back for Zubkov. Zubkov winding up with a shot. Kemp makes the save. Three seconds left. Is that the first shot they really had on Kemp on the power play? I think it was. Yes, it was. They, they had control of the puck. They were passing it around, but really didn't get any good opportunities. A couple times the puck was bouncing or it didn't come flat on the guy's stick, and it, it was foiled on his attempt. But let's go. this guy's been Matt, the man go, of the Matt. night. Three seconds left in the penalty to Paul Cavallini of Team Canada. Well, an important face-off here with three seconds left. You want to get possession of it. The penalty's over. You lose it. You can walk in for a good scoring opportunity. It is 1-0 Team Canada. 6.21 to play in the second period. And this has been a little more exciting the second period. They're a little more wide open. Canada back at full strength. Well, the Soviets uh, seem to be applying the pressure a lot more this period than they have in any period in the series. Uh, but Team Canada, at the beginning of the period, they had some good scoring opportunities, but be tailing Peter, off a little bit. Peter Carpenter-Croft! Peter Carpenter-Croft! Peter Carpenter-Croft! This is Yanni. Yanni falls just at the Canadian line, running now. And it's fed back for Yanni once more. Canada trying to get the attack in motion. This is McLaren to the Soviet line. McLaren got across. Now he's taken out by Bozikov. This is Ronning in with McLaren. Working hard along the boards. Ronning works on Freddy scores! All right! Hard work. Hard work paid off. Well, that was a beautiful little play by uh, beautiful play by little Cliff Ronning here. What's the work McLaren does here in the corner? He works in the corner. He digs that puck out. He holds on to it. Defends off the Soviet player. Now watch little running sneak loose here. Behind the net. Quick little move in front. Nice play. Little Gretzky maneuver there, Sid. Well, we've seen that before, haven't we? 
He's excited, I'll tell you. Well, that's a boost Team Canada needed. They've been falling back a little bit. Big break for them there. This is Ronning's 32nd game of the season. He has 28 goals now, total of 56 points. He's the scoring leader on this edition of Team Canada thus far. But here come the Soviets, Vasiliev. Vasiliev works right to the side of the goal. He is taken out heartily. Antipov now. Antipov. Strength in the Soviets. You can see it there. Vasiliev was out in front. Kemp just about got caught there. Held for a face-off, though. At the 88 Olympics in Calgary, Canadian athletes will go for gold. That's what Sport Canada's best ever assistance program is all about. Well, this is what it's about tonight, Daryl, because it's a good crowd. It's a good crowd, good enthusiasm, and we're all Canadians. We want Canada to win, and there's a... He must play hockey. He's missing his front teeth. Yeah, little Bobby Clark. Huh? <laughs> there's the old Team Canada sweater. Reminds me of 1976. I think that's the one you wore, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure. Is it that, uh, that style, I mean, there have been... Several Team Canada sweaters, but I seem to recall the slash of that one. This is just the start here of uh, a build-up to 88, and I think the Olympics being in Canada, it's going to be very, very exciting. Well, it draws ever closer, you know. When Canada was first awarded the 88 games in Calgary, uh, it seemed like it was forever away, back about three years ago now, but we got Listen, guys. a little bit closer. One, two, two years and a couple of months. Now. One, two, two, four, check. And that's when Dave King Keep will really be put to the now. test. Keep playing suitably. Earn passes. Earn now all the time. Dave King there is telling his players he just wants one guy in, two wingers back, and then the two defensemen. A one, two, two, four, check. He's got five minutes left in this period. He doesn't want to take any chances. And you can't take chances against the Soviets. We mentioned at the outset of the broadcast, they score in bunches. In game one, they scored three goals in less than two minutes. In game two, two goals in 30 seconds. That's Chris Felix riding out the Soviet player. Now here's another Soviet coming the shot that time, fired by Stepan. Tony Martin! Frosty! Tony Martin, Frosty! Boldin can't keep it. Keep control of it for the Soviets. Here's a chance for Greenlaw. Put in control. Babinov. Good forechecking by the Canadians, slowing the Soviets down, coming up. Drop, this is man. Step Up. Number 18, Step Up. Make into sure the corner Brady. against Eat Greenlaw. It to. It's to the line. Zupkov can't hold it in. 2 0 Team Canada leading the Soviets. Four minutes, 11 seconds Eat left in the second Eat. period. This is Game 3 from the Cops Coliseum, live on TSN from Hamilton. Soviets to the line once more, defensively played well by Roy, at least on the initial shot. Back to the point, Babinov, and deflected out in front. Good play by Priyak, and he deflected it just wide. Canada would certainly like to get out of this period with a one-goal lead. 2 nothing wouldn't be bad either. Here's a chance for the third Canadian goal. Harkness going in. Foiled from behind. Good defensive play that time by the captain, Katarikin. Perry Prop out in front. Oh! Prop fitted out in front beautifully. Doroshenko made the save. Soviets again. Kareen going in all alone on Kevin scores! Sergei Kareen. It is 2 to 1 now. Good chance at one end, Daryl. And as so often happens, it ends up on the goal at the other. Isn't that the truth? And here again, Canadian flat-footed a little bit. That's the way to cut into that head, I'll tell you. That's tough to defend a player like that. He waited, he shot the legs open, okay, okay, shoved it through. Okay at 16.40. I think I jinxed him when I said the one goal lead. You did, huh? <laughs> I get a little excited too, you know. <laughs> Well, a chance for Herkus at one. Kareem turns it into a Soviet goal at the other end of the ice. And the Soviets 
Inspired by that, add pressure to Team Canada. Inside the Canadian zone. Barutnov. Good move by Felix. Felix got it ahead for Miller. Barutnov for the Soviets. Serge Roy pinches in to hold it in for Team Canada. Skurju couldn't control it. Now starting out for the Soviets. Kriuchkov. This is Varianov. Out of the line for Rudnov. Two thirty-one to play in period two. Nice and called against Canada. The fans in Hamilton are not pleased with the call. They seem that they're a little happier with the work of the referee tonight. Yeah. They were the other evening when yeah, Karen the Soviet was in charge. Soviet the other night, uh, we thought he missed a couple calls, but uh, then the five-minute penalty uh, that Kent Team Canada killed off, but I didn't think it was deserving of a five-minute five penalty. There he is, John Wilson. He's doing a fine job tonight, he is. A lot of pressure under him in a game like tonight. He's working most of his hours as a referee in the Ontario Hockey League. The officials for this series from Canada have all been from the CAHA. Shot right on Kemp, he saves and hangs on. John Kemp, you know, he's a major in physical education and that's one of the things that all these players, uh, they receive a scholarship when they join the Olympic program and they're all going to school. Their hockey's important but their schooling is just as important and that's a nice thing to see and that's a real plus for this program. Well, I think it's what can make it successful. This is year one of a three-year program. And what we've seen in this series has been impressive as far as Team Canada is concerned. It certainly has. It's no easy chore to go to school and... Uh... Annie Paul. How quickly they get even. Annie Paul worked across the line rather slowly. And then just let the wrist shot. Well, he dragged the puck in. Watch how he turns his body. He starts to drag the puck in, and he puts everything behind it. What a wrist shot. Right in the top corner of the net. Looked a little like Bobby Hull's old shot. 18.02, and goals late in the period often hurt you more than one midway through a period, or at least it seems to have that kind of psychological effect at times. Well, we talk about the Soviets. They're so explosive. They sit there, they'll get a few chances, and the next thing you know, they got two or three in the net. Here they come again. To the line and across. Boldine. Boldine plays it back to the point. Shot right on for the captain, Kanarikin. Here comes Team Canada. Von Kappen down the right side. Fed it in. Herkus goes after it. Number nine. Herkus clears it in behind the Soviet goal. Back to the line, Serge Roy. Doesn't get all the way through to Roy at the point from Joseph. Now Herkus goes back in. That's Von Karpin playing the body on down there. The Soviets on the attack again. Priyakin, Priyakin has a man open going right out in front. And that time it was Boldine. That one got through a maze. Into the corner with a minute left, Stepa. Priyakin, Priyakin tries to stuff it home on the short side. Kemp had the post well covered. Well, if anything, I think the Soviets, uh, from what I've seen so far in the series, their upper body strength seems to be a little stronger than our guys. They're, they can hold one of our guys off. They're strong on their sticks, in front of the net. Even in their own end zone, their defensemen are very strong on their sticks. And I think that comes with maturity. we got a lot of guys between the ages of 17 and 20, and it takes time to mature and to fill out. And, uh, Dave King's got a program going with our guys. They lift weights three times a week. They do cycling. Their cardiovascular uh, marks are probably better than any team in sport right now. Dave King has never had a team with such a, in such good shape, he said, in all his life. This is Miller down the right side for Canada. Just dumps it in, going in after it. Ronick, McLaren. McLaren gets there first, working along the... And Canada keeps it in. That's Ronick, 27 after it. McLaren dumps it back for Ronning. Ronning has one of the Team Canada goals from behind the net. 
Couldn't control at that time. 21 seconds left. Second period. And in a back checking. It pays out. But it's only McLaren in across the line with 12 seconds to go. McLaren is down. And it is underneath the Soviet player. Nemchinov down there. So the face off will be inside. The Moscow selects. So, Donnie McLaren, he's 5'10, 185 pounds. He's only 20. Two years old and he's taking business. He's in his third year at business at the University of Calgary. He scored three goals for York University in the final of the CIU Championships. McLaren. He belongs to the Vancouver Canucks and I'm sure at some point he's going to get a good shot at playing for them. Eight seconds left in the period. It is even at two. Canada and the Moscow selects. Team Canada had a 2 nothing lead on goals by Proft and Ronick. Kareen and Antipov settled the score with answers for those two markers to make it 2-2. Back to the line. Felix winds up with a shot. Couldn't direct it through. Four seconds left. And it's in behind the Soviet goal. That's going to be it for the second period. Much more entertaining than the first. Four times as many goals for one thing, but end-to-end -end excitement a lot of the way. Well, there were some good scoring chances in both ends of the ice. The Canadians had some good scoring chances at the beginning, but for the overall period, I thought the Soviets for the time, and they had the, the better scoring opportunities. And when they had them earlier in the period, they didn't score, but then Canada comes back and gets another one, 2 nothing. And as we know, the Soviets, they can change things around so quickly. Two other chances, and they tie it right up. I know, Daryl, you were down here at the Cops Coliseum yesterday putting on a little clinic in association with Team Canada, you and uh, the coaching staff of Team Canada. And I understand that was well attended. I also understand that the shoot-up between you and Guy Charon, an assistant coach with Team Canada, had them standing in the aisle. Well, a couple of old-timers. We had a lot of fun here yesterday, and there was a good turnout, about 5,000 kids. And Charon and I had a five-shot penalty contest. We both scored on the uh, our initial two shots. Um, we, it was for $50. The goalies got $10 a save. We went into overtime. Well, the goalies made a lot more money than <laughs> we did. I didn't make any. Sharon beat me uh, about on the eighth or ninth shot. But it was fun, and everybody enjoyed it. And they, the kids uh, learned a little bit about the skills of, uh, of these hockey players out here. Dave King was really running the clinic. Here we go, guys. Come on, Alex. Uh, Jump Part-time instructor, were you? Yeah, I was the commentator uh, trying to keep it interesting, you know. even after two we head to the third period you know one thing about dave king with the mic on might not be a bad idea to get those helmets with the uh the, you know like the quarterback season football you get the coach telling you what you're doing out there well, well up here we are able to hear king suggest to several of his players what they should be doing and from the overview we have we can hear him say come on, on marta get in there get in there wouldn't it be great as a player to be able to hear that it might throw off your concentration a little bit but uh, technology uh, has come a long way maybe uh maybe we're not that far away from it I know you see a lot of these young kids walking around with the Walkmans uh, all the time. Yeah, I'll tell you, you're absolutely right. Another two years, a kid will be able to concentrate Every because they've had Walkmans on since they were seven years old. Maybe we should put a mic on their coach. Take the red. Then we need a translator up here as well. Underway, third period. He doesn't seem to say too much behind the bench. The cold stare. Here's Ronning going in. That play broken up by Fosikov, number five for the Soviets. Comes to Ronnie again. He went the wrong way with it. And there's a penalty coming out. The referee tonight, John All right, Wilson. Boys. All right, here's a chance now. Mike, Mike, Mike. Dave King knows what's going on. You can hear him in the background. They got it, eh? Yeah. Wilson. Little Wilson slashing. Wilson takes the court. Okay. Wilson takes the court. You tell the guys to pull them to the right. Go away from the pressure now. Well, the Soviets like to uh, play aggressively on, a, on their penalty killing. They like to force you at all areas of the ice, not giving you time to set up and make the passes. It is Ronning at center, flanked by Miller and McLaren at the points. Felix 
and Roy for Canada. This is Chris Felix into the corner. Team Canada on the power play. No power play goals in this one so far. This is Felix. Back for Roy. Roy has a little difficulty. Now gets it back in for Miller. For Canada, no shots on goal in the power play so far. This is Ronning. Ronning getting it right back for Serge Roy. Roy halfway into Miller. Miller walking in for the shot. Score! Well, what a great shot here by Miller. He sees he's got time, Soviet defenseman backing up. He uses the defenseman as a screen, and he throws that one right underneath the crossbar. Watch him take a look here. He's got time. He's got Ronning out to the side. Good hard shot. Very effective power play. They scored on their first shot. Well, they had possession the, the entire time. Didn't take them long to put it in. For Miller, his 26th goal of the year, he has 21 assists for 47 points for Team Canada so far. Second leading scorer behind line mate Cliff Ronnie. It is 3-2 Canada. Into the first minute only of the third period. Doris goes after a loose puck into the Soviet zone. Chance for Noah Brown. Couldn't get a good shot away. Now Brown. Slides into the boards with a Soviet player. The face off will be in the circle to the right. A Victor Doroshenko. Well, there's the young captain, Newell Brown. He's one of the older fellas on the team at 23 years of age. I like his style of play. He reminds me of he's just a little checker. He's a good penalty killer, but he's a workhorse all the time. And I'm sure that's why they made him the captain of this hockey club. For the example he sets out there. He played with Michigan State and with the Cornwall Royals in Memorial Cups in 79 and 80. Team Canada in the Soviet zone. Another chance to the back end. Doroshenko, the save on Joseph. Well, heads up play here. Good back end. You don't see many good back ends nowadays. Doroshenko was there to get his pat on it. 3-2, Team Canada leading the Moscow Selects. We are in the third period as the Soviets break from their zone. Andy Pop to the Canadian line. Clark squared off and didn't let him around. Well, it's an important goal. Uh, usually Team Canada in the series, the third period, they've been down and the Soviets seem to tend to play a very defensive style of play. Now the Soviets are gonna have to take it, uh, take it to them a little bit to get back into the game. That's Clark, and he's standing up at the blue line, very effectively. He's got his eyes right on the Soviet chest there and just gets his body in front. Yesterday in practice, Dave King has a drill for the defenseman. No sticks, hands behind the back, and they got to play their players one-on-one. -on -one. It's a very tough drill, good for the agility. Benny and Clark, Benny and Clark. Soviets pressing in to the attack in the Canadian zone, kept in by Zubkov, not for long. Here comes Team Canada, man open on the right side. That's Von Carpen. Carpen just inside the line, fed it for Duras, the pass was behind him. Soviets quickly to the offense. Well played that time by the newcomer to Team Canada, Jerome Carrier. Well, Jerome, he's here for a couple of games. He's played junior in Verdun and he's attending medical school, so got to be a tough life for him to play hockey and go to medical school at the same time, but great young guy. Well, Dr. Greg did it rather effectively in Edmonton. Yep, certainly has. Surgeon Cap. Surgeon Cap. Soviets get in across the line. That's Nemchinov feeding it into the corner. But Benning is there for Canada. Just his man, it goes all the way down. Icing against Team Canada. Called. As Kuchkov touches the puck. firm clear against pressure. You can screen on their forward check, try to hold some guys up, eh? Take a little pressure off the D, play the puck, now, okay? Against quick pressure, use the reverse. Face off in the Canadian zone, right back. 
And the shot fired high and wide by Nemchinov. Soviets out in front, fed there by Karin. Miller dumps it in behind the Canadian goal. After it for Canada is McLaren. Now it comes to Ronning. Ronning to Miller. Back to Ronning. Not quite. Yep. Yep. Miller tries once more for Canada. Takes it right back behind his own line. Now Ronning is back. Taking the pass from Cavallini to the line. This is Ronning. Ronning has one goal for Canada. And lost it there. Had it poked away. Soviet open on the right side. Kareem couldn't control it. Good play by Serge Roy, who had to get back in a hurry to make the defensive move. This is number 13, Vassella, having difficulty. The captain, Canna Rakin, dumps it in. Vassella is after it. So is Chris Felix. Felix got there for Canada first, for Cavallini. Defensive side! Canadians changing on the move. Felix is out there for Cavallini. And icing call against Team Canada. The Canadians have the lead of the Soviets by a goal at this stage of the third. Something the Canadian team is doing, if they're inside the blue line, they're just trying to get the puck out. They've iced it a couple times, giving their guys a chance to get a change and some fresh troops out there. 23 against 23, Vasiliev against Felix. Felix wins for Canada. Here's Duras on the right side, and Greenlaw was just a stride ahead on the left wing. If you look back at the World Championships last year when Canada won a silver medal and they beat the uh, Soviet team, their strategy was, again, to try to delay, take as many whistles as they can, ice the puck. That was Carpenter's uh, coaching strategy, and it worked. Uh, we have a goal lead, and uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with icing it and slowing the tempo of the game down. It was a pretty good year for Canada in international hockey. That silver in Prague you mentioned, the Spengler Cup, a gold in Davos, the World Junior in Finland, the NHL pros winning the Canada Cup. So for Canada, tremendous international success. There is some suggestion that the Soviets are sending a team like this Moscow Select to Canada this early in the season. They're trying to regain some of that lost sparkle. For Canada, this is Greenlaw. And for Duras, Duras fed it through for Brown. He couldn't quite control it. Soviets along the boards. Babinov feeds it over on the right side. Greeny, Greeny. Babinov comes up with it again to the Canadian line and the cross. 15 15 to play right out in front. And it was off a leg. This is Duras for Canada. Two Soviets take him out of the play. Now Prop, he's got one goal. Going in, Prop. Forces Duraschenko back of the net with Duraschenko. Held the fort. Ahead for the Soviets. Koshevnikov shot on Kemp. A very nice scoring chance by Prop here. This is the first shot on Kemp. Second or third period. Here Prop is cutting into the net. All he does is uses his body to gain some strength on the uh, Soviet forward and he just goes for the net. Soviets win the draw in the Canadian zone. Back to the point, fired wide of the target. Make sure it hurts. Yeah, that's the way to make sure. That's the way to make sure. Neutral ice area. Priyakin can't control it for the Soviets. Boldine. And now, Kriuchkov, number nine, dumps it in. Soviets after it. Kriyakin, number 11, back to the point, Kriyachkov. Von Karpin dumps it out for Canada. Kriyachkov goes back for the Soviets. Kriyakin has it broken up by McLaren. McLaren put it behind Miller. And the Soviets start back. The Moscow selects, led by Boldine. Boldine right out in front, takes a return pass, and just about poked it past the Canadian netminder, John Kemp. Here's McLaren, fed it ahead for running, or rather for Miller, number seven. Miller bodied off the puck, couldn't get anywhere. Soviets the offense once more. Priyakin, Priyakin, fed it in. Trailing man on the play, now broken up by McLaren. McLaren, a three on two for Canada, now to a two on one. 
Ronning goes to the net. Miller takes the shot. How about that? Look at this play by Miller here. Cutting in on his forehand. Using the Soviet defenseman as a screen. Firing that wrist shot. Before that, McLaren made a great rink-wide pass. The mid-center zone, the backhand pass right across the force the two-on-one situation. Good scoring line here. They're the top scoring line for Team Canada. Two in a row for Mike Miller. Six twenty-four for Miller's second goal. Canada out in front, four to two, and the Moscow selects. Good hockey could get even better from here on in. Lots of time remaining. The Soviets have been behind by two goals before in this hockey game. With thirteen minutes to play, the Soviets are going to be very much in this game before it's over. Along the boards. Cleared back all the way down toward Doroshenko. We talk of Mike Miller. He has made his presence felt in this new Hamilton, Hamilton building. He certainly He was has. the one who put Priyakin through the glass yeah, on Thursday night. And he now has two goals for Team Canada. He is a former member of the Hamilton Steelhawks. Soviets on the attack. Zupkov takes the shot. It is high of, out of play. Chance for Canada. This is Duras going in. One man to beat the goaltender. He scores with the rebound. Duras. Clear cut break over here by Duras. He just keeps those legs going. He gets the first shot away and he goes right after his rebound into the net. What a happy bunch of Team Canada players we have now. Happy spectators in Hamilton as well. Let's go, let's go. Team Canada for by number 10, Peter Duras. Well, Peter, he's a second round pick for the Winnipeg Jets. Here's a second angle of it. He just keeps those legs going. Nobody's going to catch him. And a stride or two on Zubkov. Zubkov never closed much ground. It is 5-2. to two. Canada leading the Soviets. The Moscow Select. And this is game three of the 85 series between these two teams. To the side of the Canadian goal. Kemp can't come up with it. And it goes loose again. Here are the Soviets swarming all around. Back off the boards. Priyakin is upended. And Watch Team Canada beat, clears now. it to the neutral zone. Soviets right back in across the line. Miller working along the boards. He's up against Stepa. Going right in. Kemp stands his ground. And the Moscow selects a little frustrated at this stage of things. John Kemp, big save right there. At the 88 Olympics in Calgary, Canadian athletes will go for gold. That's what Sport Canada's best ever assistance program is all about. Five to two Canada, leading the Soviets. 11.50 to play, third period. Danger zone, you gain that zone for us, okay? Fun night in Hamilton. They got the wave going. Somewhat. I, I would say that then that is the first wave ever in Hamilton. Carpen out in front. Joseph trailing on the play. Is there a second too late? Four check with one. Four check with one. It's getting a little better. We're talking about the wave. The right? wave, yes. This place is alive and fun. Felix for Canada in behind his own net. 
Trying to feed it through for Prop. The Soviets intercept. Similiev has difficulties. Now Kareem tries his luck. Canadians are just standing the Soviets up in the central ice area and not letting them get across the line. Babinov finally dumps it in, but it's not very deep. Roy goes back for it. This is Serge Roy winding up for Canada. Easily out. Roy going through the Soviet team, got to the line, cleared it to the corner. Popikin for the Soviets. Vasiliev couldn't get anywhere. Here's Newell Brown getting it across the line. Going after it. Duras out in front. And Greenlaw was there. Couldn't quite get a stick on it. Fed in by the Soviets. Koshevnikov, number 16. But Canada claims that that's Greenlaw along the boards. Greenlaw lifts it high. And it is waved off as an icing call. Ten minutes even left in the second in the third period. Canada leading the Soviets. The Moscow selects. Five to two. Another chance for Canada. This is running, running. Feeds it over to Miller. Miller. That's three in a row. I'll tell you, that kid can shoot the puck. Watch running here, make a nice little play. He hangs on to it, delays a little bit. Miller's at a bad angle, but he just snaps that puck right off the post. Three for Miller. All in the third period. Duras has the fourth Canadian goal of this period. The Soviets in some difficulty now, catching up at six to two. Canada. Listen, guys, listen. And it is offside, just outside the Canadian line. Soviets trying to get back on track. Kanarekin, the captain. A pass over on the left wing. Play broken up. Stepa was the intended player. He's in the corner now. Duras got it out across the line for Team Canada. Keep him short. Get him in. Get him in. Take him in. You can hear Dave King in the background. Priyakin. Similia couldn't get a shot away. Out in front, they score. It was fed out in front for Nemchinov, and Kemp really didn't have much of a chance. Make it six to three. Well, we get a little sloppy in our own end zone here. Soviet player behind the net, just a feed out to Nemchinov and right in the net. He just put it on his forehand and. John Kemp really didn't have any chance on it. We'll just settle right down here, okay? We're in charge. We're in charge. Chris, settle, settle down. Settle down. Soviets like to do that so much. Put a put a player behind the net to help out. To make it a two-on-one and the perfect pass into the net. 6-3. Team Canada leading the Moscow selects. Eight minutes, 32 seconds to play, third period. A four-goal explosion gave Canada a 6-2 lead at one stage after it was tied 2-2 after two. Soviets have narrowed to within three goals now. Out in front again. And that time, Stepa couldn't control for the Soviets. Here they come again. They come in waves. Fired high and wide of John Kemp. Kemp has made some big saves for Team Canada tonight. This is Felix. Felix working against Nemchinov. 
And it's finally held along the boards for a whistle. It'll be in the Team Canada zone. Well, we know how explosive the Soviets can be, and I'm sure Canadian players are still sitting on the edge of the bench there because you know they can turn the game around very, very quickly. And again, they had a couple good scoring chances. And there's lots of time left with 7.53 on the clock. You certainly don't want to give them that next goal, that's for sure. This is Miller. One bank off the boards. It'll go just wide of the target. Sergeant Clarkey. Oshenko back Clarkey. for the Soviets. Miller takes a shot. Another blistering drive. That was handled by Doroshenko. The rebound. Almost out to the blue line. Soviets on the attack. Now circling back is Vasiliev. Vasiliev for Kriochkov. Now Andy Pov. Andy Pov. Tripped as he moved in. This is Yanni. Yanni lost it. Now Canada regains control. Running. Now McLaren. Now running, running. Doroshenko the save. McLaren put it just wide. Damien, Croft and Carthy. Serge Roy made the shortstop play at center ice. Got it ahead for McLaren who dumps it in. McLaren, I've been impressed with his backhand passing. Again, he threw one over to Ronning there to put him in for a good scoring opportunity. Soviets to the Canadian line. Shot right on. Kept the save on Priyakin that time. This is Clark. Number 21 for Canada. He lost his stick. It was whistled down as it was caught up underneath. Defenseman Doug Clark. The 88 Olympics in Calgary, Canadian athletes will go for gold. That's what Sport Canada's best ever assistance program is all about. And it's about moments like this too with Team Canada in the formative stages of building for those games in 88 in Calgary are showing so well against a very, very well-rated Soviet team. Well, I think it really speaks highly for the program and for the coaching staff. You look at the success Dave King's had in his coaching career, and uh, you have to give him a, a lot of credit. Here's Carpen, can't control it. Neutral ice area, the Soviets carry it back in across the line. Back once again to the Soviet line. 6.06 to play. Third period, Canada leading 6-3. to Priyatkin, number 11, around Yanni Yanni. Good defensive play to force the puck to the side. And Felix is over there. And now it is dribbled out across the line on the backhand by Perry Proff. Tony. Tony's line. Tony's line. Dave, you're hot. It's Tony Herka's line coming out. You can hear Dave King. They're to hold the blue outside the blue. They're just giving too much. Just giving about five feet of the blue. Give the blue outside there, okay? It's not out number. You hold the blue a little tighter. Chance for Doris out in front. Oh! Tough luck. Noel Brown, the team captain. Got in just a little too close, Daryl. Don't worry about it, Trent. Don't worry about it, Trent. One. I got a line. Sergio. Sergio. Clarky. Sergio. Clarky. Greenlaw fired it in. Herkus goes after it. Soviets control coming out of their own zone now. This is Kareem to the Canadian line. Batted away. Here's Duras. Not quite enough speed getting started. Hold the line outside the blue. For Canada, Herkus along the boards, working there against Similiev. Babinov sends his right winger Kareem away. Had to go back for a pass. Now over the left side, Similiev, and he is taken out by Sergio Roy. Back to the line, Zubka fired just wide. Number seven for the Moscow selects. Kept in by Babinov. Now Duras got it across the line. Kirkus couldn't come up with it. Canadian sending just one man in now. Well, Dave King wants his defenseman to stand up at that line. They're doing quite a good job of it right now. That's Kareen ridden up. And Kent comes over to make the save. A stoppage in action. At least from ice hockey. Tempers flare a little bit down there, but nothing will apparently come of the minor altercation. It is Team Canada 6. 
lifted his knee I up. I want uh, Carpet Crofty. Escorted his partner Carpet to the corner. 4-10 left. Canada leading 6-3. On the Moscow selects. Tip, tip. This is McLaren. Has a man open in the middle. Shot Doroshenko the save. And again, Doroshenko is brilliant. First of all, on Newell Brown, 16. And I didn't see who got the rebound, Darrell. Well, this is a great play here. McLaren. McLaren's got the puck along the boards. Just dumps a little pass in here. To Newell Brown. Now watch the glove save. Quick hands. Is that McLaren coming across? McLaren again. Speedy little guy, the left winger from York. What Dave King talked earlier today about how he wanted his players driving for the net. And they've certainly been doing that when they're getting this offensive chances. Priyakin to the Canadian line. Stepa couldn't get across either. Number 18. Get him in, get him in. Priyakin tries once more. Got it across for Panarakin. And the Canadian defense still standing. The Soviets up just inside the line. It is difficult for the Soviets to penetrate the Canadian defense in the third period. Yanni took his man to the corner that time. Ryakin plays it off the boards. Here's McLaren. Got it out. Here's Ronning over for Miller. Miller couldn't take the pass. Ryakin for the Soviets, number 11. Miller going in against Ryakin. Here comes Team Canada, led by Ronning. He's by himself. Canadians have to pull a line chain. Ronnie, Miller, McLaren. Best line for Canada so far this evening. So far this season. Here's Von Carpen. For Canada. This is Prop Prop. In across the line. He's hauled down. No penalty on that play. Two minutes, 33 seconds to play. It is 6-3, Team Canada leading the Moscow Selects. Dave King and company have learned a little bit in this series, Daryl Sittler. Well, that's what these series are all about, you know. They're trying to prepare, like we say, for 88. They can adjust their styles of play, and they've done a good job of that. Soviets swarming around. Now Babinov can't keep it inside the Canadian zone. This is Zubkov, number seven. He lays it off for Kareem to the Canadian line. And Kareem is pushed over. He wants a penalty, a little frustration show. Another Soviet down in the corner. Team Canada working tenaciously along the boards. Open man, couldn't get, get it through to Duras. Soviets to the Canadian line. They're not even trying to cross it. One thing about our, we Canadian players, I know one thing we've always had, we've had talented players, but we got lots of heart, lots of enthusiasm, and it's showing out here tonight. I think young that guys. may have ticked off the post. Koshevnikov took the shot. One minute, 11 seconds left to play. Final period. Soviets trail by three at a six to three. Chance for the Soviets at the Canadian line. Antipov dropping it back for Koshevnikov. And Team Canada dumps it all the way down. One thing the Soviets aren't used to is playing back-to-back -back games. And again, we play tomorrow night in the Montreal Forum at 7.30. So it'll be interesting to see how the Soviets respond to the back-to-back -back hockey game. Soviets won the opening two games in a four-game series. Team Canada, 30 seconds away from chalking up a 6-3 victory in Game 3. Von Karpin couldn't catch up to it. Doesn't really much matter for Team Canada now with 19 seconds left. Soviets across the line. Hannah Rakin around behind the net. Nobody out in front. Hannah Rakin, the Soviet captain, fed it in.
Canada Cup, a World Junior Championship, a World Championship, or an Olympic win. But a very emotional victory, just the same for Team Canada. It happens when you play the Soviets in international hockey, and when you pull off a victory, a hard-fought one like that, and play so well, it becomes a rather emotional night for the fans in the stands, the hockey team, and just about everybody watching. It was fun. Well, any time we beat the Soviet Union, then, like you say... The presentation of the defensive player of the game goes from Team Canada, number one goaltender, John Kent. So, most valuable player awards. To make the presentation to the Moscow Select MVP, Hamilton retailer Robert Sands. Moscow Select's MVP, number 19, Yuri Kimilyev. the presentation to the Team Canada MVP, Jim Steele, the area sales manager for Labatt Brewing Company, for Team Canada number seven, Mike Miller. The score of tonight's game, Team Canada 85.